This is the story of three legendary alpinists who pushed themselves to the limit on one of the most challenging peaks in North America. David Lama, Han Jorgauer, and Jess Ross Kelly were known around the world for their incredible skills and achievements in the climbing world. As they set their sights on the steep and complex east wall of House Peak, they had no idea that they were about to embark on the most perilous adventure of their lives. Of all three climbers that were involved in this tragedy, David Lama was arguably the most famous one. David Lama was born in 1990 in Innsbruck, Austria. His father was a mountain guide from Nepal, and his mother was an Austrian and came from Innsbruck. David inherited his father's love for the mountains and his mother's love for the culture. He was exposed to climbing from a very young age and showed an extraordinary talent for it. When he was five years old, he attended a climbing camp organized by Peter Haveler, a Himalayan veteran who had climbed Everest without oxygen. Haveler was amazed by David's skills and potential and called his parents to tell them that their boy was a prodigy. David started competing in sport climbing when he was 10 years old and quickly rose to the top of the ranks. He won the European Championship in bouldering in 2007 and the European Championship in lead climbing in 2006. He was a star in the climbing world, admired for his strength, technique, and style. The second climber who was involved in the accident was Hans-Jörg Auer. Auer was born in 1984 in Zams, a small town in the Tyrrhenian Alps of Austria. He grew up in Etztal, surrounded by mountain peaks and glaciers. At a young age, he began climbing, following in the footsteps of his older brother Gerhard, who was also a mountaineer. Soon he developed a passion for climbing, especially free soloing. According to him, free soloing gave him a sense of freedom and harmony with nature. He became famous in 2007 when he climbed the fish route on the south face of Marmolata, a 3,000-foot wall in Italy's Dolomites. By himself, without a rope, he climbed the route in less than three hours. It was the first time anyone had accomplished such a feat on a large wall of that difficulty. The fish route was rated 5.12c, meaning it was very difficult and technical. He said he had spent two years preparing for the climb, studying every move and every hold. The climb gave him confidence and peace of mind, and he enjoyed every moment. The third and final climber of this trio, Jess Ross Kelly, was a prodigy. His father was John Ross Kelly, a legendary climber who had conquered some of the highest and most difficult peaks in the world, including Everest and K2. Jess began climbing with his father when he was only four years old. He quickly outgrew his father's shadow and created his own identity in the climbing world. Mountains, adventures, and challenges were dear to him. His natural talent and fearless attitude were unparalleled. He became the youngest American to climb Everest at the age of 20, breaking a world record. In addition, he climbed other amazing peaks, such as Denali, Cho'oyu, and Mount Huntington. In the process, he was sponsored by some of the best brands in the industry, such as the North Face, Loa Boots, and DMM Wales. Everything was going in his favor until the fateful day of April 16, 2019. The three climbers had arrived in Canada in early April 2019 with the intention of climbing new routes on some of the most iconic peaks in the Canadian Rockies. They had already climbed the Andromeda Strain on Mount Andromeda, Mount Alberta before setting their sights on House Peak. House Peak is the highest peak in the Waputic Mountains and one of the most difficult and dangerous climbs in North America. It has a steep and complex east wall that rises 1,000 feet above a glacier. The wall is regularly exposed to avalanches, cornice collapses, falls, and spin drift. In addition, the face is affected by extreme weather conditions and poor visibility. The wall had been climbed only once before, in 1999 by Steve House, Barry Blanchard, and Scott Backus. They named their route M16 and they took about 18 hours to climb it. A route rated W16M8RX is a very challenging route that requires climbing vertical or overhanging ice and rock with small and uncertain holds, with little or no protection, and a high risk of fatal falls. In the early morning of April 16th, the three experienced climbers left their camp at dawn and skimmed their way along the base of the wall to the first obstacle, a frozen waterfall towering above them. Hans-Jörg took the lead, swinging his ice axes into the brittle ice. He paused as a rain of snow fell over him. Then they continued to the top. David and Jess quickly followed him, using a tool to secure themselves to the rope. They reached a ledge and looked up. The wall was a maze of gullies and strips, some covered with snow, others bare and rugged. 
David decided to explore a different line than the previous climbers. First, he crossed left along a snow edge and then climbed up a steep slope. Jess and Hanjorg joined him and went up the same. They reached another snow line and crossed it again to the left. Above them, they saw a waterfall sparkling in the sun. It was the king line, a mixed line that had never been climbed. David led again and climbed the waterfall. Jess and Hanjorg quickly followed him. They emerged from the waterfall and detached themselves. They had climbed the most difficult part of the route. Smiling and hugging each other, they were proud and happy. There was still 450 meters to go, but they were confident they could make it. One more time they crossed left, looking for a snow ridge that would lead them to the top. David Lama and his team began a trek through a 30 meter wide snow channel that led them to the southwest ridge. As they climbed, Jess led a difficult mixed slope up the ridge and eventually reached the summit at 3,295 meters. They had succeeded. They had finally accomplished what only one other team had accomplished, but little did they know that fate had other plans for them. Hanjorg captured the moment with a photo of the sun shining on them, but as they began their descent, clouds suddenly appeared. They knew that a tough descent awaited them, but no one had any idea of what was to come. They chose the same route by which they had reached the summit, the M16 route. Suddenly, as the climbers were descending, a huge avalanche crashed down on them. They heard the slope creak and turned to face the inescapable violence that would descend upon them. Jess managed to slam his ice axe into the ice with considerable force before the full force of the avalanche hit him, but it was not enough. The avalanche overwhelmed him and he lost his footing. After falling six meters, the rope between the ice axe and the loops tightened around Jess's shoulders. The full force of the avalanche broke the shaft of the ice axe. David and Hanjorg also hit their ice tools into the ice, but they were most likely not connected to their tools. In fact, neither David nor Hanjorg used hand straps for this climb. When Jess was later found, two ropes were wrapped tightly around his torso and both legs. Hanjorg had no rope with him, only his ice axes and crampons. David was tangled in a few loops of rope, perhaps trying to anchor himself to the wall. Jess was also tied up, perhaps hoping to catch his friends if they fell. They had no chance against the force of nature. The avalanche carried them through the gully over a cliff, where they landed in a snow basin. There, they landed at the foot of another route, Life by the Drop. Quentin Roberts, a Canadian climber who had admired their achievement from afar, witnessed the horror unfold. He had parked his car on the Icefield Highway and walked to the base of the mountain with his partner. They were scoping out the east face when they saw a huge cloud of snow billowing from the gully. Quentin ran back to his car and grabbed his camera. He snapped a photo of the avalanche after just half an hour after Hanjorg had taken a selfie with David at the top of the gully, not knowing that the three climbers were buried under the snow. He thought they had already descended safely to their camp, but they never came back. Jess was supposed to call his wife Allie by the morning of April 17th, but he didn't. His father, John Ross Kelly, was terrified. He called the Mountain Rescue Service and asked them to look out for them. The weather had turned during the night. Clouds obscured the upper part of the mountainside. The rescue helicopter flew over the mountain twice, but saw nothing. On the third flight, they saw one or two bodies on the avalanche slope below life by the drop. They were partially covered with snow. The rescue team could not land on the slope because it was too unstable and dangerous. They had to wait until April 21, when conditions improved slightly. The team members descended with an avalanche dog and began digging. They found Jess, David, and Hanjor close together. They had to cut the ropes that bound them to free them from the frozen snow. Then they were returned to their families and friends. The rescue team also found cameras, Jess Ross Kelly's iPhone and GPS. Using all of their equipment, Jess's father, the legendary John Ross Kelly, mapped out his son's last expedition. Using location, pictures, and his decades of experience climbing the toughest of mountains, John wrote a detailed report explaining all parts of the team's ascent, the difficulties they faced, and their tragic passing during the descent. Thanks to his explanation, the world now knows accurately what happened that day. John hopes that his report would serve as a guide for future climbers and would provide them with an accurate description of what happened on the House Peak. The mountaineering world was shocked by the news of the House Peak disaster. Three of the most talented and respected alpinists, Jess Ross Kelly, David Lama, and Hanjor Gower were killed in an avalanche while descending from a new route on the east side of the mountain. In several places, 
family, friends, and fans gathered to pay their last tribute. In Canmore, Alberta, a hall was filled with hundreds of people to share stories and memories about the climbers. In Spokane, Washington, Jess Ross Kelly's loved ones lit candles and celebrated his spirit of adventure. In Innsbruck, Austria, the families and fans of David Lama and Hans-Jörg Auer watched a video montage about their incredible accomplishments and listened to speeches from their peers. This disaster also prompted reflection on the nature of climbing and its risks and benefits. Many climbers were saddened, shocked, and confused by the loss of their friends and heroes. Some wondered why they climbed and what they hoped to accomplish. Others reaffirmed their love for the sport and its challenges. They all realized how precious life is and how powerful nature is. The House Peak disaster was a tragic event that marked the mountaineering community forever. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time.